So this is a video I wanted to make for a while, and to be honest, I'm glad I waited until now because the amount of understanding and the amount of things I want to share in this video have increased. There was a time, I'm going to introduce this concept of de-armoring right now. If you don't know what de-armoring is, I'm going to give you my definition of it, but I'm sure if you were to speak to someone else, they might give you another definition. De-armoring is a tantric concept, and I might be wrong with that, but from my original understanding or my first understanding of de-armoring, it was from my explorations and understanding of tantra. If you don't know what tantra is, a really rudimentary way of describing it is, I would say, the yoga of sex, the yoga of pleasure, the yoga of almost healing through pleasure and how pleasure can heal. Uh, so de-armoring is an interesting phenomena. De-armoring, let's just get to a much more stable position. Hello. Oh, hello. Uh, de-armoring is the process of through healing, through feeling the sensations in our body, our body becomes more sensitive to them and almost things we found painful, painful experiences that should be pleasurable become pleasurable. And that's because uh, you're processing emotion, processing emotions stored in the body. And so things where like, um, look, I'm trying to keep this PG rated because of YouTube, but things that were once sexual that might have been painful now become pleasurable. And this is interesting because I've been doing, you know, I, I, I pretty much only ever exclusively talk about surrender on this channel and my own experiences and stuff that might help you guys. Um, but it's really worth recognizing uh, that this is an interesting concept and an interesting side effect of the surrender process. Now, <clears throat> usually when I'm working with people, you, uh, we will be surrendering, we'll be processing emotions, usually found within the center of our being. You know, it might be from your groin to the top of your head. Uh, and people will have stress responses, they'll be, basically be reliving trauma, and will be doing it in a really safe way that um, they that they get to process through it. Now, the interesting thing I want to share is that when we talk about healing, when we're healing emotions, when we are surrendering to our emotions to heal them, which is what surrender is, uh, basically, another way of saying emotions would be reaction. So it's like our reaction to events that we haven't fully been through. You know, for example, it might be you had a car accident. Just This is, again, just a silly example. Uh, you might have been in a car accident and because of that tension, that, that, that intense tension, getting near a car becomes painful and becomes stressful because you're almost reliving that experience. Upon surrender, surrender to the fear, the pain, all of the, um, the associated reactions that we had, we get to eventually process the fear and then you will be able to get back into the car much easier, even better than it was before. Now, the thing that I haven't been sharing, the thing that I wanted to share was there was a time where I realized I was actually storing stress in my arms and my legs. Now that's an interesting concept. Storing stress in my arms and in my legs. Now, upon realizing that, I just realized my arms and my legs were just so fatigued. It was like, if fatigue is an energy, they were, and my arms and legs were a bank account, I had a lot of banking. I had a lot of fatigue deposited in my arms and legs. Now, is this actual fatigue? Well, yes and no. What's more important is it's emotional fatigue because our body remembers, our body stores emotions in our fucking body. If I ask you now where happiness, if you say, if you feel really fucking happy, where do you feel it in your body? Most people will be like, ooh, my chest. If you feel, if you feel like hungry, where do you feel it? Now, it might be like hunger is not an emotion, but our reactions to it are. And that's the most important thing. So I started to recognize that I was storing stress in my body. And so as I surrendered to it, this is more of a personal video than a like, here's some things you can do, but you might get something out of this too. As I surrendered to the this feeling of fatigue in my arms and my legs, my brain was literally reliving fatigue, unprocessed fatigue from my childhood literally reliving. This is what happens. This is what happens when we surrender, when we process things. Um, more often than not, we will relive an experience 
mentally because it's like our brain rewinds, but with the new added experience of the healed emotion, the healed process, like the new information. It's like we relive it with slotting in the new information. It's funny, like, it's really funny, like, to the point that, like, uh, healing someone with a lot of, like, you, you, you go through the surrender process. Like, so I will, I will be coaching someone with issues uh, related to their sexual history, right? We will surrender to the feelings they have about that. They will literally relive mentally their sexual history, but with the new experience of the healed emotion. So they, it almost seems like they're like, oh, I never had an issue. They never have an issue in the past, in their mental past, they never have a issue in their mental future. It's like back to the future. We've got to go back. Somewhere in time, we've gone backwards and we've changed the past and therefore the future has changed. That's fucking what this is. So I realized through that process, I was surrendering this fatigue. I was literally reliving the times when I was 18 and I joined a gym for the first time. And I tried so hard. No idea what I was doing. Tried so hard and never let myself fully rest pushed and pushed and pushed and all that stress I was reliving, but now from a much more healed perspective. And then it fucking hit me that I was carrying the stress with me all my life and that this was like, instead of processing, all I did was try and power fucking through it, right? 2000, what was it, 2000 and... Last year, <laughs> I went to the gym like twice a day or something like that. I had some good results, but still powered through it. Now, what happens if you give a horse more than it can carry? It's gonna slow the fuck down. That's what we humans do. You give us more than we can carry, we will slow the fuck down. And that's what happened with my body. My body was like, the fatigue, it found a way to stop. Now, fun fact. In one of my early channel iterations, I had another YouTube channel not going to name the name of it because don't want you to go fucking find it. I haven't taken it down. Um, but it was when I first came back off tour. This is a side story that's related. I did this, this cocky interview. I just found a random person. I was going to ask them questions to prove my point because I was a very cocky motherfucker back then. And I asked her, I asked this person, I pulled in for an interview for a YouTube video. I was like, hey, do you, um, like, you know when you go to the gym and it hurts? And she's like, yeah, it's a good burn. And that fucking perplexed me because I swear to God, I might, like, I know some of you guys might relate to this. Some of you guys might not, but I never felt like it was a good burn. I went to the gym because it was an ego boost, because logically I thought it was going to be making effect, but I never felt good doing it. I felt good doing it in here, but never felt good doing working out, lifting weights and in here or in, in here or in, in here. <laughs> The point of it is, is one thing that always perplexed me was, was this concept, the good burn. It never, it never fully gelled with me and it never really hit me. Even to the point I was like, when I was getting back into bodybuilding, I bought Mr. Arnold Schwarzenegger's bodybuilding encyclopedia. And then I would watch these videos of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Never wanted to be that like Arnold Schwarzenegger, but sometimes, you know, you learn things to get to Mars and it's just easier to get to the moon, right? Like if you, you learn people who've gone to an X extent, you don't have to go to that extent, but you can, you can go to your extent. Anyway, point of this thing is he always related lifting at the gym to like orgasm. It was like orgasmic is like, yes, I'm coming at the gym. I'm coming at home. My life is great. And it never fucking clicked until now that this process of surrender and healing in in an unemotional sense, like so stored stress in my muscles, in my muscles, was in fact a dearmoring process that the process of lifting, the process of going to the gym will in fact be like orgasm. Now, there's an interesting concept. I'm very, this is, this is the point of this video. This is something I'm going to be testing out. Now, testing out um, next week, because next week I'm going to go back to the gym. I'm saying next week I'm going back to the gym because in Australia, the gym's just opened up last week or this week. Now, 
What's interesting about this is I've been using surrender as a method of weight loss. That's still not going to stop until like that. That's going to be the thing like taking you taking. Uh, that's a whole thing for another story. That's a whole story for another video. Um, the whole point of this is the dearmoring process and recognizing that painful things. I often say this to people, especially when I'm working with them one on one. I will remind them bad turns to good. Good turns to great. There is, it's almost like a stepladder of emotion. When we surrender to grief, for example, the grief turns into, the grief turns into acceptance. When we surrender to that acceptance, that acceptance turns into space for new life in our body. Freedom, it's the freedom to express ourselves. The freedom to be us unapologetically, who we are, who we are meant to be in this world and to become, to basically manifest our higher self. What does stress become? Stress becomes pleasure. But it doesn't have to be just stored in your arms. I know this because I've, I've personally done it with other people, but I've viscerally experienced this within myself. I'll be stressed out beyond my fucking mind. And remember the rule, right? It's not the thing, it's the thing about the thing. So it's not the stress, it's the stress about the stress. That finally I surrender to the stress. And stress isn't an issue anymore. In fact, it energizes it's exciting. I function higher under pressure. Stress becomes pressure. And without pressure, you don't make fucking diamonds, am I right? Because that's physics. <laughs> anyway, this is this video to cap out the week. Um, I've been doing less videos this week. I've been really fucking just hounded by life. So I might try and figure out more ways to be integrative. Like, for example, I'm fucking running late for my next thing. I had to drive home and record this video. Um, because I didn't want to do it in my car. Might do it just sitting in my car next time. Uh, but we'll see what happens. Anyway, uh, if you if you haven't already got it, my new online course out is out now. Link in the description. Unlock your desires using deep emotional surrender to pull out your fucking suppressed desires. Because Lord knows that even me as a fucking master of it, I still have this shit. And I realize that some of the time, we don't get what we want because we just don't know what we actually fucking want. So learning to surrender to our desires is a great way to tap in to figuring out what we want, more of what we want, not at a logic level, but at a fucking visceral body level. Most of us, what we do is we, we haven't fully connected with our bodies due to maybe trauma or just life experience. So what we end up doing is we overcompensate with our head. For example, with relationships. You motherfuckers, you motherfuckers I'm helping with your relationships who are like single and who are high functioning people. I say this, like you CEOs, you jerks. You motherfucking jerks, you are the most worst culprit of this all, of, of, of this at all times. What you do is you are like, you have down in paper what your person is, what your amazing person is, but it's not the first person you fucking want. It's the person you want here because logically it makes sense, but your fucking being, who you are, doesn't want this person because you know that's not what you need and you know that's not what in your path. And so the two have a disconnect. So you go for what you think you want, but it's not what you really want. When we actually get in tune with it, you actually realize that, oh my God, I only wanted this person because it was a fucking ego thing or it was a thing because that's what I thought I wanted because I thought I would be safe. Then you realize you're safe the entire time. Then you can go for the person you really fucking want. That's like people that what they do is they run a fucking script. Here, let's go into a quickly extra innings rant time. Some people are running a goddamn script in their relationships, right? They're like, oh, I have to do this because this is the thing. Logically, it makes sense. Once they finally logically get it, they realize it wasn't what they actually fucking wanted in the first place. And it wasn't their manifest fucking destiny. That's what we refer to this as. Your manifest fucking destiny. That's the full scientific phrase. Manifest fucking destiny. It's the reality you were born to create in this, in this body, in this life vessel you were born in. Now, if you were born 50 years ago, your manifest destiny might be different, but your soul will still express itself. If you are a high-functioning person, if you are an amazing person, you will find new ways to be amazing. 50 years ago, 100 years ago, your soul will find new ways to express itself. So we don't get too worried about what it is. We more worry that it is happening. Because that's ourselves, our fucking soul surrendering and expressing itself. So get the course, unlock your desires in the description. And thank you for watching. Have a great weekend. I'll catch you next, next week for more amazing of whatever the fuck this is.